How do I become a rally driver? I'm Carl from Rally Action and I'm going to answer the question. Rally is a spectacular sport. The speed, the sideways angles, rally cars flying through the forest. It's no wonder so many people want to get involved. In this series, we're going to cover all the steps to get into rallying. Okay, so having a ball doing club level motorsports in Carna Crosses and maybe the odd motor car and maybe even autocross. However, still not time yet to think about buying a rally car and for some of you that must be killing you. The thing is though, it is time to talk about some of the other things that you need to do, such as sorting out a co-driver and also we need to explain how a rally works. I'm actually going to start with how a rally works and that will lead us neatly into why it is you need a co-driver. Most likely this is what you've seen on TV, the action part of rally. And for those not involved in rally, we tend to apply the logic of a racetrack with all the cars starting at the same time and finishing on a chequered flag after racing so many laps around a set course. Rally does, however, differ greatly from circuit racing. For a start, there's the surfaces and the conditions. Could be dry and dusty gravel, muddy, raining, snowing, or dry tarmac, or any combination of these, just depending. Everything in a rally revolves around time, and therefore the clock rules supreme. Rallies are also broken into stages. There are the special stages, which is the sideways action we often see on TV, and then there is liaison or transport sections of the rally, which is often on public roads, must follow public road rules, which is used for moving between the various sections of the rally. Specific time is allowed to work on rally cars, and that time is known as service. It's the only time that the service crew are actually allowed to work on the car if anything is needed on the car outside of service time or outside of the service area, then it's up to the driver and co-driver to work on the car themselves. If there's one thing to take away from this, it's that you're racing against the clock and not against anyone else. Rallying is a team sport, and so enter the role of the co-driver. The co-driver is the chief timekeeper, makes sure the car is when and where it's supposed to be during the rally, and of course, reads the pace notes and navigates the driver, either in liaison or, as here, in the special stages. So it may seem that the co-driver's job is quite difficult. Well, it's not extremely taxing, however, it does require attention to detail, and at least on the rallies, the co-driver does need to be organised. The co-driver does, of course, have to sit next to the driver, potentially at high speed, and there does have to be a good level of trust on both sides of the car. So how do you find a co-driver? Well, sometimes the best place to start is with somebody you already have a relationship with. A family member, such as son, daughter, brother, sister, etc. Or a friend. And if those options aren't available, the next place to try is using your contacts through your car club and asking around at a car club meeting. Next episode, we're going to talk about the types of rallies and the cars that you can use and the long-awaited buying a rally car. If you'd like any more information on how to get into rally, contact us via our website or any of our social media channels.